Uh, walk us through what you heard yesterday, given the fact that we really didn't get any updated metrics per se. It was more incremental news about the operating systems. Uh, what, what, what struck you? Why 400? Sure. Uh, so we did raise our price target yesterday uh, before the conference started. I would probably say, you know, in terms of uh, the conference itself or the keynote, not a whole lot of incremental news when it comes to the hardware. You know, the custom silicon was a well-known secret for a while. Um, like you said, incremental improvements on the iOS and some of the apps and some of the products like the watch and the pencil. So net-net, was it a material event? Probably not. At the same time, it was definitely incremental. And it kind of like, you know, reinstates the fact that, or reinforces the fact that this is one of the reasons why people love being in part of the Apple ecosystem, which is, you know, they keep giving you more and more additional benefits, uh, which makes it very difficult to leave it. We just had a long discussion with the developer, uh, obviously disgruntled at the terms uh, that, that Apple demands given their leverage. I wonder how can developers as a group uh, create their own leverage or is it going to be up to regulators? How much risk do you see behind the App Store? You know, it's a question that comes up often and quite honestly, I think, uh, you know, this has been going on for a while. There has been a lawsuit that was filed by like, you know, the uh, end customers against like Apple taking the 30% cut. It's been going on for a while. Largely, investors seem to be not too worried about it. To your point, if regulators do step in, then I think people would get concerned. But at the end of the day, the reality is that for smaller developers, the ecosystem that Apple provides and uh, the broad swath of install base of users that it can touch is pretty impressive. And so for many of them, it is very key. Are arguably the larger ones are ones who can probably have their own um, other options. But I would say, largely speaking, most developers, you know, it does give them a good, good channel to like touch upon a, a whole huge swath of the install base. Chris, uh, good morning. It's John. T to my eye, the, the biggest risks that Apple is taking on, the biggest risks are platform related. The, the transition to its own chips and the need to transition developers at the same time. The transition to more focus on a services model and transitioning developers in the App Store to what, however it's gonna clarify these rules. How much do you factor those transitions and the risk associated with them I into your model? Sure, John, uh, nice to hear from you. I would say that the platform risk is something that has always been there. What I mean by that is the platform is effectively what helped Apple generate so many new uh, subscribers and customers. So at the end of the day, when you look on the hardware side, you know, if you're alluding to like, you know, the Mac going to custom silicon, which is using a ARM-based processor rather than the Intel processor, you know, at the surface it looks like a huge uh, threat or a huge risk because they're moving away from x86. But the reality is that if you look at the um, iPhone ecosystem, the iPad ecosystem, they're all being done more on the ARM-based uh, architecture as it is. So I think the movement from Mac, from, from Intel to the ARM-based ecosystem, to me, at the end of the day, is not a huge challenge. It just takes a while, but it's going to move eventually. I'm not too worried about that. To your point, I think um, we'll have to see how the thing shakes out with the developers. And, you know, if it ends up being like, you know, Apple takes a smaller cut, however, like that plays out. And the services side, I think the existing install base of your loyal install base of iPhone and hardware users are the ones where they're, who would they're first targeting with the services opportunity. And then eventually you start getting mm -hmm. incremental new subscribers when it comes to TV plus or et cetera, who are not legacy Apple iPhone users. But at the end of the day, I think the services story is here to stay. To your point, the developer question does come up every once in a while, and I think we'll have to take it as it comes.